Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Spellweaver today. My name is Boltor and today we're going to be doing another Deck Doctor video. This is a deck list that was sent to me by Top Hat Cat from the um, forums. And it's kind of, sort of, a mixture of Reanimate and the Mono Order um, Angels deck. That I believe it was Sinelian who played. Um, I'm probably wrong about that. You guys can tell me how wrong I am in the comments below. It, the idea is to, you know, combine the removal of corruption with the powerful angels of um, order. Um, I already have a number of things I want to do with this deck. Now, back a while back, back in like closed beta, I experimented with a um, kind of a self mill angels reanimate win through triangelica kind of deck. Um, but that. I don't know. I forget exactly what happened to it. I think I played it for a little while and said, alright, under something else. I don't remember it being terrible. I just don't remember it being like the you know, the next big meta hit. <laughs> so anyway. Um, first things first. I'm going to knock Spell Warden down to two. I don't um I don't greatly anticipate um you ever needing for. I moved the shrines down because the deck list originally called for um, three Antriel, but unfortunately I only have two. So, but um, that's not going to be a big deal. I'm not going to talk about it from now on. Um, so, I don't think you really need more than two spell wardens. I mean, yes, there are a lot of spells that you can um, hit with spell warden and that are very important to hit with spell warden, but not enough to merit four, you know what I mean? I really feel like you're going to be able to hit that one card that's going to screw you over that turn, and even if your opponent, um, you know, kills off the spell ward in the next turn, then you still kind of prevented that cataclysm for a turn, or, you know what I mean? So, um, next thing, we're going to get rid of the, the Mesmerizing Spirits. Yeah, they're good early blockers, they're good, um, but we're going to put in some alt other early blockers and some other such. Oh, same goes with um, Cavalry Field Captain. Um, it's While that's really good to trade up, we're going to we're going to need that spot for some other more important cards. So, the whole idea is to win through self-mill and some reanimate shenanigans. So, what do we need first? First we need a, um, a four of Dreadful Nightmares. Originally, this card was in the deck back when it was in Aura or Curse or whatever it was called. Um, back when it was, oof, I'm forgetting the name now. Um, Maddening Thoughts, yeah, Maddening Thoughts. Um, but now this card is even better because now primarily you're going to play it as pay three mana. Um, look at the t put one card on top of your deck, put one card at the bottom of your deck, and put one in the graveyard. You can dig a little deeper, but primarily you want to use this to either put a, um, a, an angel in your graveyard to reanimate, or put an angel on top of your deck for Call to Heavens. So, um, regardless, this is an auto-include in this deck. Um, next, do we play Flash of Delirium? Do we ever play Flash of Delirium? <laughs> I like it because, because of the card draw and because of the little bit of um, mill for the reanimate, but I'm not 100% sure you need four. So let me put in three. Flash of Delirium, where is it? There it is. Um, and now for those early blockers I was talking about. Um, I mean, for the early game, we do have a Blood Witch Harvey, but it does tend to come out a little slow. So we do have to be mindful of that. Um, so for early game blockers and for um, some pretty effective um, win conditions, um, we could go with Infernal Vultures, but that is a little slow and a little hard to make work. But um, I mean, I'm going to put in the four Relic Guard. Now, if Relic Guard do kind of get sacrificed by Blood Witch Harpy, but by the time by the time you play, you're playing Blood Witch Harpy, you've kind of move past your need for Relic Guard. Um, so, to the point where you don't necessarily need 
to play the relic guard late in the game but early game it's great to have it's pretty much an auto you're pretty much digging for that in your opening hand against any kind of aggressive deck um, and if you happen to play it while you have a blood witch harpy out then it gets sacrificed and you get a little bit of ramp you get the um, you get to play out your Antriel or your protector of the innocent um, that much faster now this is um, this is uh, 60 cards but because of the heavy reliance of angels as the win condition in this deck um, I'm I'm pretty sure we're just gonna go ahead and cut um, angelic song why are we cutting angelic song for two reasons one it's a spell and pretty much every aggressive deck out there today is running either nature or wisdom with power engineers or unicorns so pretty much it's just guaranteed to die I mean let's be honest here um, Plus, I feel it's a little more important to play the Angel Blessed Knight, just to give you that little bit of ramp, um, because it'll let you play that um, Judge uh, Guardian of the Faithful um, a turn earlier. And let's put, let's face it, Guardian of the Faithful is a much better angelic song than angelic song could ever hope to be. It accomplishes the same thing, where your opponent doesn't or basically doesn't want to attack because if you do you're going to sacrifice her and kill multiple creatures so they basically don't want to attack which accomplishes the same goal as um, you know accomplishes the same goal as angelic song so other than that um, I'm pretty set with this list um, this is gonna be a kind of a shorter video now that I realize it but I kind of went into this knowing exactly what I wanted to do and I didn't really second guess myself primarily because I've played a deck extremely similar to this in the past so um, expect a video uh, gameplay video of this deck later in the week and I apologize for this video being a little shorter but I am in a bit of a time crunch but again like I said the um, like I said, the um, I played a deck like this in the past, so I know that I know what this deck, you know what deck, what works in this deck and what doesn't. Um, you could play two more Antriel if you have access to them. I don't, um, but obviously you'd want to since Triangelica is kind of the major win condition. That and life gain off of the Antriel and just kind of winning through the big bodies of the angels. Um, feel free to cut Spell Wardens if you don't feel like they're really doing much for you. Um, you can cut down a couple Flash of Delirium. Um, maybe go two Flash of Delirium, three Dreadful Nightmare to find room for the two other two Antriel. Um, but I'm gonna, I'd say probably go with Spell Warden as the first thing to cut, just out of. But that's gonna leave that completely up to preference. So, um, like I said, expect some gameplay with this deck later on in the week. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I realized it was a little shorter, but again, like I said. Um, there wasn't much to do with this deck. I, um, I really hope something like this. I I know there's a reanimator deck that's running rampant through all of the um, uh, ranked, not the top rank, but kind of you know the upper tier, so to speak. Um, but I hope com uh, little like combo we decks like this kind of creep up in the meta because combo decks are fun to play. I don't care who you are, combo decks are definitely fun to play. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Uh, I hope if you guys enjoyed this video, you know, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, the whole nine. Um, and that's going to do it for me. Like I said, expect some gameplay later in the week, probably Friday. I probably won't make another video until Friday. And as always, guys, may the cards rise to meet you and bring good RNG to your enemies, enemies.